Theo Ushwood, LBC's political editor, joins me on the line for a sort of broad brushstroke update, I think, Theo. No, it's a detailed uh, oh, insight. Crikey. here we go. He's been digging down. Detailed insight, because listening to your programme about the numbers, the difference between total numbers of deaths and deaths per capita, I've gone away uh, in the last half an hour and done a bit of research, and I've found a very interesting interview. It was conducted by Gary Gibbon, the political editor of Channel 4, with the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, on the morning of March the 23rd. Now, you'll remember later that day in the evening, Boris Johnson introduced a full lockdown. And the question from Gary Gibbon was, had we acted, had we acted in time to prevent a similar situation in, the, in, this, in this country to what was occurring at that particular time in Italy? Very quick last question. Have you seen any evidence to suggest we're not heading fast in exactly the same direction as Italy? Well, we are taking the actions uh, earlier, uh, in many cases, on the curve, the, the curve of the epi epidemiology, um, because we're further behind um, and we've been able to see that the, the, the numbers go up. So we are prepared to do whatever it takes to get a grip on this disease and to keep people safe. Why can't I find a scientist who thinks that? Who thinks you're doing the right things? Well, that's what the vast majority of the scientific community think, including, of course, the top scientists like the chief scientific advisor and the chief medical officer. Which makes some people wonder if something strange happens in that room, because the moment you go outside that room where they're meeting with the government, you can't find a scientist who agrees with that. They're all saying clamp down. Now, James... Just to be clear... Gosh, good find. What, what Matt Hancock is saying is, we've acted earlier than Italy, mm. therefore we're not going to end up in a similar situation. Except I've also been trawling through, trying to find the point at which different countries introduced their lockdowns. Now, when you look at the numbers in terms of uh, the death toll, the grim death toll, we, the UK, has tracked Italy pretty much two weeks behind. The only thing is, when you look at when Italy introduced their lockdown, they introduced their lockdown on February the 23rd, a full four weeks, month, before the UK introduced our own lockdown. So hmm. when Matt Hancock turns around and says, well, we've acted sooner than Italy, that's not correct, because the UK acted actually, if you compare like for like, acted two weeks slower than Italy, because, of course, we were two weeks behind Italy, Italy uh, in the first place. When you look at France, they acted a week before. March the 17th, they introduced uh, their lockdown. Spain uh, introduced their lockdown on March the 14th. Belgium on March the 18th. So what we now have is we have a two, two numbers from uh, comparing the UK with Italy. At the, at the moment, Italy's grim death toll is 26,977. The UK's death toll, second in Europe behind Italy, 26,097. So we heard yesterday in the House of Commons at Prime Minister's Questions, the government tried to shift the way that they did it, that we should be doing our accounting. And they talked about per capita, per one million. How many deaths per one million? This is what Dominic Raab, standing in for Boris Johnson, had to say. I absolutely share um, his, uh, I guess, our, our joint horror at the number of deaths. Tragedies each and every one. Uh, equally, I, I'm going to disagree with him that it is far too early to make international comparisons. If they are to be done, they should be done on, on a per capita basis. And I think uh, we're already seeing that there are different ways that deaths are measured, not just in the UK in the different settings, but across Europe and across the world. And of course, this is a very, as I've said, delicate and dangerous moment in this pandemic. Now, just why Gosh. would why would the government, why would Dominic Raab say that in response to Keir Starmer? Well, the answer is fairly obvious, because when you look at the numbers that are per capita, per one million, the UK is actually fifth behind not only Italy, as it was before, but Spain, Belgium and France. So questions today for Robert Buckland, the Justice Secretary, about what the government was doing and whether this apparent success uh, with, that Boris Johnson announced on Monday when he returned to work was actually true. Robert Buckland turned around to uh, Nick Ferrari on LBC and said, well, now was not the time for such questions. I, th I think, you know, we're, we're in the middle of the woods here. We're nowhere near out of the woods. And we'll know later whether or not uh, everything we did was the right approach. A lot of what we've done is clearly right. Some things we're going to look back on and say, well, yeah, perhaps we could have done that better, to be honest. Uh, but I think the British people uh, would expect the government now to just get on with the day-to-day -day job, concentrate on what's important and uh, deliver.
You heard it there from Robert Buckland. The British people would like the government to get on with uh, the job rather than asking difficult questions. Yeah. And here we are. Yes, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm presenting, I'm, presenting the fact I'm not trying to defy any will of British people or anything. <laughs> and I, I mean, you sound slightly surprised by the sort of cohesion of what you've just reported there. The, the, so, I, mean, the fact, I mean, because I don't know if you've been listening to my American coverage and a suggestion to Simon Marks the other day that, and it took me a while to realise this, and it's not a particularly sparkling insight, but if when you toss a coin you shout heads and tails and you're secure that you've got the blind support of people with their heads up their backsides, then however the coin lands, you can claim victory. And listening to that report there from you, Theo, it's quite hard not to conclude that the government is now trying to claim it shouted heads or tails, regardless of how the coin lands. So what I've, I think that I've tried to demonstrate in that report is that when something doesn't work out, mm. they shift what the measurement was. So um, they've done it with testing. We heard um, this target of 100,000 tests. Uh, and then last week, Dominic Raab said, well, actually, it's not about how many tests were conducted. It was what the capacity for the tests was for. So actually, we've reached a capacity of 75,000 tests. The fact that the 52,000 were only conducted uh, yesterday, that's not important. It's about the capacity being at 75,000. So yeah. you had a state, there was a, there was a period of time when people were asking about our preparedness to deal with this uh, pandemic. We, we saw what was happening uh, in Italy, questions about the preparedness. Matt Hancock, you heard in that interview, excellent interview with Gary Gibbon, where he compared what Mr Hancock was saying with what the scientists were saying or not saying, and, him, and he turned around and said, well, we'll be, be we'll be in a better position than Italy. Well, it's turned out when you've accounted, when the government's now officially accounted for care home deaths alongside deaths in hospital, each one a grim tragedy uh, for a, a family, that actually the numbers are comparable. There's a difference of just under 900, where, and we're now outstripping the death toll in, in the rest of Europe apart from Italy. And therefore, they've changed it might, to per we, capita. We, we might overtake Italy, of course, in, in, in the not too distant future. If you look at the if FT's we, modelling, we, we're well, on we, course we, to we're do. Buried. No, no, if we look at the FT's modelling, mate, we've, we're, we're, they're, they're, they're in our dust already. So is Belgium, actually, which is still at the top of some of the measures as well. Do you, I, I can't, I, I will talk off air about what your thoughts are on, on why this isn't the biggest story in town. I, I, I suspect they chime in parts with mine, but you'll have, you'll have insights that, that I've currently missed. But such are the strictures of your objectivity, Theo Usher, that I wouldn't deign. Can I ask a question, to, James? Well, it's not, it is mystery hour. If I get but it can right, I ask a question. round of applause. If, if people do not trust the media, if people do not mm. trust journalists, who benefits? <laughs> Qui bono for you two fans who benefits indeed uh, particularly at a time when the government faces fairly robust criticism or at least fairly uh, important questions and what is the they love these words agenda and narrative currently being pursued well malign the people asking the questions and um, convince the public not to be interested in the answers LBC's political editor Theo Usherwood there ending with a with a with a ringing inquiry if if journalists are and you know look at lamestream media look at hashtag fake news why why do that unless you are hoping to get away with murder metaphorically yeah all right just metaphorically for now